Well, this is one to get excited about. It's European group stage football for the first time in this version of the head coach. We're with Dundee and we're heading to Azerbaijan. Yes, that's right. Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's part 28, and today, after an average start to the domestic season, we are heading to Karabag, our first Europa League group stage game after a pretty friendly draw at the end of the last episode. It's not gone great on the pitch since. We're picking up a few little injuries, which is just giving us trouble, but we have got a massive chance today. We'll also have the Dundee derby, the first one of the season. That one at home against Dundee United, of course. And then we've got them three days later in the League Cup as well. So the thing that's going to be hardest for us here and that we're going to have to get used to is when and when not to rotate this side. We're still going to be testing the water of playing every three or four days and which games are we going to be able to play, which players are going to be able to last. So there's plenty of experimenting to do and plenty that could go wrong. And of course, due to the board's lofty expectations now and our overachievement last year, they want us to finish in the top half. So there are a few things that could go wrong, but if it looks like it's going to, we'll try and dump ship. But I'd love to stay with Dundee. I'd love to get it right. So let's see if we can. If you're looking forward to this one and you are enjoying the series so far, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. Now we've got Christmas and New Year out the way. It will just be plain sailing every single day here. Of course, there was a special channel update yesterday. So please do catch up with that if you haven't already. And then we'll be back as normal tomorrow with our live stream at 10.30am and Bangor City in the afternoon. There's plenty of transfer news to come in that one. In this one though, that's not the case. We got to the end of the window last time and we played just the two games off camera. Firstly at home to Aberdeen. That one didn't go quite to plan. We did come back and get a point in the end. We dominated the match. But again, fell behind to a set piece. And we're ending up chasing the game. We've not quite opened our wings yet this season. We're still playing a little bit safe. And we're not really pulling the boat out to try and get points. And we have had injury problems throughout. We then lost to Rangers 3-1. We went ahead early on. And they came back. They were too strong. But that's not the sort of result that's going to determine our season. We know that already. The type that are are these next four here. Two league games at home to Dundee United and away at Kilmarnock. We've then got Dundee United in the cup quarter final. And of course, the Europa League group stage match as well. And what's making it a bit harder with our start is Dundee United are top. And they're not just top for playing well. They battered Celtic 4-0. They're winning most of their other games quite convincingly. And of course, we've got to try and stop them in the cup as well. They've got a really good side. And I'm starting to worry they could get away. Of course, Rangers have started very well in this group as well. They won 4-1 in the early kickoff against Luda Goretz. But now it's our turn. We're heading to Karabag. And let's go and pick our 11. So this is what we've gone for. We've got an injury to a Dauphin, our first choice centre-half. So Jacques and Akinola play together for the first time. Jagni, the left winger, is not back from injury. We've not picked Aaron Chapman for the squad because Carmichael will be our backup for this one. So I think we're as strong as we can be. I nearly put Edwards on the bench, but in the end I've stuck with Byrne because he's been in good form recently. And in terms of the 11 itself, injuries aside, I think we're as strong as we can be. As you can see, the dynamics are really starting to dip here. So I do worry that we're going to have some clashes in the dressing room, particularly with the differing levels of professionalism. Some of the players coming in who are a bit hungrier, who are a bit more determined. And these ones who are happy to just go along. So we've made a couple of tactical decisions. Chambers will come in at left back because he's better defensively. And then we then want Preston going forward in the derby. Bentley's back to full fitness. He's in goal. And everyone else is first choice. So it's Daniel Bentley between the sticks. McGee, Akinola, Jack, and Chambers the back four. I'm tempted to try these as wing backs on support. Because in other saves, it's really revolutionised the ratings. But I don't want that to be at the expense of our performance generally. So we'll keep an eye on that. Goran, Pittman and Griffiths the midfield three. Richie Hosler and Cooper the wingers. Cooper really improving already. Starting to look a good player. And I think he's going to be a quiet start this season as we predicted. And then Carlton Morris is up front. Three goals so far. Maybe not quite in the form he was in at the back end of last year. But I'm hoping he'll turn the corner soon. So into the game we go. It's Karabag v Dundee. And we just want to make sure we avoid defeat. On the road, we want to try and keep it as tight as possible. We've got a very experienced side in Karabag. 
They've got nearly exclusively over 30s, which is quite ironic. It's not something we see very often. The likes of Daryl Yamma over there, he's a player you'd recognise. Arlinda Jetty, a former player in the UK. And the danger man Yonov is now in his 30s as well. So not the quickest, but of course still a threat. So we're going to pump the fist. We're going to tell the lads to prove a point. We have got 10 out of the 11 motivated. Not bad going, really. And into the first half we go. It's Karabag v Dundee. What do you think the score will be? Can we win in Europe? Well, that was an appalling first half. Not quite sure where the rest of the fans are. But two shots on target each. No highlights. And nil-nil at the break. Pittman's picked up a knock. They're suggesting a twisted knee. But to be honest, if we could be offered a nil-nil now, I'd take it. I think it's a good option for us. So I'm going to replace Pittman with Stewart. He's going to become a box-to-box -box midfielder. Or are we going to go for Byrne, who has been the better man when he's played this season? I don't know which one to go for. Byrne's probably a bit better going forward and Stewart a bit better defensively. So I'm going to go for Stewart as a result of that. Into the second half we go. I might just drop Griffiths to a support duty as well as the centre midfielder. Just because I don't want to get overrun in there. It's still three and a half star ability. It makes no real difference. So let's just try and get a result. In the other game, it's one all between Braga and Salzburg. That's in Austria, that one. And here comes Chambers from left back. 61 minutes on the clock. And this is the first match action we're seeing. Which tells you what sort of game it's been. As Goran picks it up at the back. Finds Jack into Stewart. I mean, it's Jack's first start for the club, I think. I'm sure he was on the bench last time. As Cooper goes back to Chambers. Into midfield again to Morris. And he gives it away to Yanma. Back to the centre half. Who goes all the way back to his keeper. The pitch seems to be digging up a little bit, so I'm not quite sure if that's affecting the two sides. But here come Karabag over halfway, on the left. Beats two men. It's a brilliant run. He's got time to shoot as well. And Daniel Bentley makes a very good save. Tips over the bar. Fran Marida, one of the men coming on. A wonder kid at Arsenal like 15 years or so ago. Now in his 30s and really struggling physically. Though Yonov's got it left side of the box. Cuts inside. Back to the edge. Buchel shot's blocked. And McGee hoofs it clear. Fran Marida recycles it to Bouchel. Back to Marida again. It's good football from the host. They are a good football inside. They just haven't got the physical attributes. But technically, they're a very good team. They're better than us. And it's starting to show as they build a bit of pressure. Early subs made. We might have to do the same in a minute. Cooper's had a poor game. He's struggling for fitness all season. And Jamie's got it again. We just can't get it clear. The back pass has gone to halfway. And finally, we get a little bit of respite. But that was a good chance for Karabag. So let's go and make another change. Just try and shore things up a bit. So the two standout poor players are Rodriguez Goran, who's going to be replaced by Byrne. Stuart will go into the holding role as a defensive midfielder on defence. Just sit there, literally. I don't know who's best out of these two in each role. So I think we're probably going to stick with as it is. Although Griffiths is much better defensively. So let's have him box to box. We'll have Byrne as a centre midfielder on support. He could even be a playmaker, you know. Just give us a little bit more. As we're losing the deep line playmaker, we can have an advanced one in instead. I'm going to bring Cooper off on the left to be replaced by Forrest. He's going to become an inverted winger on attack. And we're just going to go for it. We've got 20 minutes to go. We're still nil-nil. We've still got that back six structure. So can we get the front five forward? With Richie Hosler on the right to McGee. To Burn Into the box. Morris can't get there. It's back to McGee though. Burn again can deliver. Into Richie Hosler. Loses out. But we're keeping it in there. We're keeping the pressure on. Stewart back out to McGee on the right. Gets to the byline. Back to Burn McGee again. To Burn again. Someone deliver it will you? McGee then hits it straight at the defender. I mean what a waste of an opportunity. Bukel on the left will bring it away. Goes back to his fullback. And that's such a wasted chance. Jack heads it clear to Burn To Griffiths. The pressure's back on. We're really pegging them back here. Can we get the goal to show for it? Alan Forrest cuts in from the left. Beats two men. Goes from the edge of the box. And he's straight at the goalkeeper. But some really good pressure there from Dundee. And again, this one could go either way. It's a Marida corner for Karabag. Doesn't look good. It's off the line by McGee. Griffiths loses out in the air. It's down on the edge of the box. Karabag still look the more threatening. They're keeping that territory on, but they've lost it. And Forrest clears to Carlton Morris. We know he loves an individual goal. We all remember the Scottish Cup final. Here he goes, left side of the box, to Forrest, to Richie Hosler. And he heads just wide from eight yards. Probably should have done better in truth. And now, we're not getting a break from the highlights. After all of the lack of action for the first hour, 
the last 15 minutes, we've basically seen the whole game. And Yonov's got in. It's a poor through ball, but he's done enough. Yonov second time in. That is awful defending. Really, really poor. And in a game like this, and in a situation like this, to concede those sorts of goals is really poor. We're going to go attacking. We're going to demand more. But I think we're going to go to defeat here. As Richie Hosler gets in the box. Right side. It's another poor delivery. The amount of crosses we've wasted today. As McGee does it yet again. It falls out to Stewart. But the final product has been so, so poor. And here's Stewart again to Griffiths. Time on the ball. But we're not looking threatening. Stewart's picked it up again to Burn. They're just passing it between themselves. It's like a training session. Forrest to Griffiths. Back to Stewart. Over the top. Norris is there. But it's over hit to the keeper. I think he was off anyway. And what a waste of territory that is. Long ball forward by Karabag. Akinola intercepts. Jack's had a poor game, interestingly. Wouldn't have started if everyone was fit. Forrest cuts it back. Sean Byrne on the edge. Great effort. Sean Byrne scores. Brilliant strike by Byrne. Not really deserved the way we were playing there. We weren't really penetrating with our possession. But Sean Byrne puts a beauty in the corner. And now we're defending set pieces again. I don't want to throw it away straight away. And Bentley claims it brilliantly. Almost called him David Bentley. About four times I've done that. It's a long ball for us. Morris is in. He's beaten the defender to it. Carlton Morris. Oh, he's straight at a keeper. Carlton Morris in form and firing. Does not miss that. But he has not got his shooting boots on this season. A couple of penalties and one from open play. He's been far from convincing. Just that great finish against Olympiacos. It was the only one. As Forrest picks it up again, there's three minutes to go and we're really starting to get on top. But it looks like we're going to have to settle for a point. Not a disaster in the grand scheme of things. Everyone has drawn. I think third might get us into the Europa Conference as well. So I think we're pretty pleased with that. It's a good performance. It's a solid result. And it's a point on the road in Europe. We certainly would have taken that at the start. And we managed to get it thanks to Sean Byrne. Carlton Morris late miss has been highlighted by the media. It really was a good chance. But Sean Byrne saved the day. 1-1 one, one here. 1-1 one, one in the other game between Salzburg and Braga. And we've got three days to recover for the Dundee derby. United are top of the Premiership. And we need to kick them in the teeth. We're back for the Dundee derby. And I can't wait to see how many of these aren't fit. I'd also really like to wait to come up against Lawrence Shankland and Finn Malcolm. Who have been destroying this league. But let's have a look at who's fit. It's asking us to go to the match. Let's have a look. So, everyone suggested to be just about fit. Unfortunately, we still haven't got a Dauphin back. We could potentially make some changes to the bench today. There's a few that I'd like to bring on. But I don't know. I don't want to rotate too much. I want these players to get used to playing. I'd ideally not like to have Jack centre-half, but I've got no choice in that. I'm tempted to put the wing-backs on support duties. And to be fair, Chambers did alright at left-back in the Europa League game. But I'm going to bring Preston back in. He's been okay in the league. I think we're going to go for support duties and just see how it works. I want to push them back in the derby. But then we're up against the front too. It's really hard to judge. Goran's not had the best start in front of the back four. There's so many things I'm not quite sure about. But as it is, we're going to stick with the same 11 that got the draw in Azerbaijan. The same bench as well as a couple aren't back yet. And we'll just see how it goes. If we need to make changes after this... We've got a cup game where we can really experiment. So do you think we can win the first of two derbies in a week? And do you think we can knock Dundee United off their perch at the top of the table? Let's go and find out and see how bad these European hangovers are going to be. So the only change is the left-back Preston who comes in for Luke Chambers. Other than that, and going for the more attacking option at left-back, I think we're sticking the same. I don't want to change too much at this stage. I want all these new players to settle in. There's still a few of our former heroes from the live stream save. So Seagrist, Fuchs and Shankland all in the lineup. They've got two youngsters in the shape of Finn Malcolm. And then on the bench, I'm sure Declan Glass is there as well. So there are a few players that we know well from the live streams. And of course, there's one that's not made our squad in Logan Chalmers. But that's not it for today. We have got to get Carlton Morris back in form. We've got to get a result. Form goes out the window in this. And that's a good job because Dundee United is excellent. So we're going to get the lads to do it for the fans. Most are motivated. Harvey Griffiths, weirdly, is demotivated. I'm not quite sure how for a derby. I've got the bus. The fans can play the part. And at home, we need to make this a fortress. Let's get into the first half and see how we get on against this deadly front two. Interesting that Dundee United have gone for the same tactic that we play in there in the live stream save. 
It seems to work a treat. Of course, they've replaced McNulty with Malcolm, who, just to show you, look how good he's become in this game. I mean, in the live stream save, he's had an injury and he doesn't look great. But he is a top-class striker at this level now. So with 20 minutes on the clock, we've kept them quiet. But let's see if that will last, as we've got a throw-in on the right with McGee into Richie Hosler, and he's lost out to Mockery. He might be another youngster, actually. I'm sure Mockery was there in, in the live stream save. I'm sure he's one we've got out on loan and we're watching. As Diaz clears long, Akinola wins the header. Straight given away to Rustic, though. He finds Finn Malcolm. Shanklin's up with him, and he's going alone here, Malcolm. He's got pace that we can't compete with. He's flown in Danny Preston there, not made the challenge. And Jack heads it away to Fuchs. A right back overlapping, gets it in again. Malcolm unmarked. I thought that was in. It hit the stanchion, then the side netting. Looked like it had gone in off the keeper. But thankfully, with half an hour gone, despite probably being outplayed, it's still 0-0. And again, we probably take it at this point. Five minutes to half time. It's Preston with a throw into Jack. I mean, what's that? That's not even an attempted pass. We've given possession away. Fuchs gives it back to Segrist and he plays out to Diaz. But if we play like that all game, we're both going to run out of steam and we're going to concede eventually. As Segrist goes long over the top to Malcolm. Gets in behind. He's one on one. He's skinned the defender. Jack clears the rebound, but I don't know what he's doing. There goes the half-time whistle. It's been a pretty even game in truth. I'd argue Dundee United had the better chances. They've looked a big threat in behind because we just can't compete. Adolphin is our quickest player at the back. And without him, and Jackin in particular, we look poor. As Cooper's got a free kick. Chance to turn it around. And he curls it just wide of that near post. I think the keeper was beaten. But he also beat the post. The fact that Daniel Bentley is man of the match at the moment tells you everything you need to know. As Preston picks it up at left back again. Here's Rodriguez Goran into Preston to Griffiths. Can we work through the lines? He's just passed it away again. What is going on? We just haven't got any sort of rhythm this season. It's been really hard. We're two games a week with rotation. And I think this is where it could start to go wrong. As Rodriguez Goran gives it to Griffiths. If he gives it away again, he's coming off. That's ridiculous. I don't get out of the midfield three how he's got the best rating. Every pass is going to the opposition. Though Pittman's got it back and he's released Richie Hosler. He plays safe to Rodriguez again. Good ball out to McGee on the right though. Morris is in the middle. As are two others. It's into Colton Morris. And he's shot straight at Segrist. He probably had to score. But again, he's not in form. He's not confident. And that applies to so many of our players. As Pittman gets it in. Morris head is just over the bar. Oh, it's so frustrating. If Morris is on fire, we score plenty here. I'm going to take Griffiths off because he looks shattered. I'm going to replace him with Byrne, and we'll leave the rest for now. But I'm not convinced by the way we're playing, though we have had a better start to this half. What do we do with Colton Morris, though? We've got no good sub-striker this year. And when our one man's out of form, it probably leaves us in a spot of bother. With 20 minutes to go, Richie Hosler's shattered. So Forrest will come on for him. And then we've got one more change in the locker. And it could be either of the midfielders, in truth. Pittman's had an average game, and here are Dundee United on the right. Kiko's ball in. McCann heads it into the empty net. He rose above our players. He wanted it more. You can just see it. And unfortunately, we're going to lose the Dundee derby. I really don't know what to make of this start to the season. I'm going to have to take off Cooper because he's knackered. And it's not the change I want to make. The fact that we're having tiredness and fatigue issues in September really does worry me for two games a week for the rest of this calendar year. And I, I don't know how we recover. I don't think we're ready for Europe. It's come a bit too soon. We've not got a big enough squad. We've not got a strong enough squad. And we've not got a high enough quality squad. Dundee United have a full week's rest. They're getting it into the front two and they're outplaying us. And that happened against Aberdeen late on. We're just falling away in games. But, you know, you've got to remember, we only came up a year ago. And when we took over, our job was to survive. And we might be the victims of our own success here. Though can we nick an undeserved point? Rodriguez picks it up to McGee. A chance to get forward on the right. There's no pressure whatsoever. He goes back to Goran though. They're all playing a bit safe. There's no confidence in the team. Byrne goes left to Preston instead. Chance to cross. Morris is there. So Forrest. And Alan Forrest might have just nicked us a point. It is completely undeserved. I'm going to put the wing backs up to support duties. Just to really try and get in behind here. Because if we could nick this late on. It could change our season. I know throwing it away could do the same thing, 
but I'm a gambler. So here we go. As Byrne gets it from Preston. Back on the left again. In towards Morris. Loses out in the air. But it's only as far as Goran. He gets it in. Forrest is in. He's offside, I think. It's disallowed. I thought Alan Forrest had bagged a brace to win us the game. But as it is, there's two and a half minutes of stoppage time to go. And it's still all square. And now it's Dundee United going forward. Shanklin's in behind. Akinola's made a howler. And Daniel Bentley saves the day again. He's going to get man of the match. And it's Dundee 1, Dundee United 1. We avoid defeat. We nick a point at the end. And arguably, we could have won it in stoppage time. We're going to say they're unlucky. We want to try and keep the confidence up. But we're going to have to juggle the squad a bit better. We're going to have to prioritise. I think we have to say, well done on making the Europa League group stages. Now focus on the league. Because otherwise, we're going to get dragged into the bottom half. As it is though, due to everyone beating each other, we stay in 5th place. Hibs are on 13 and Dundee United 14. 5 and 6 points above us respectively. They're both sides that we finished above last year. And we've got to do that again here. Rangers and Celtic will run away with it. I'm really not sure how to prioritise this season. We need to hope that Dundee United and Hibs hit a poor run soon. And we need to try and get through in the League Cup. Because if we can win that or get to the final, it might give us a little bit of breathing space. So a very difficult episode. Two points, two pretty average performances. But I guess we keep an unbeaten run going, which is all we can ask for. I want to try my best to spread out the European games this season. So we get to show sort of one from each team. So we've got a double header against Braga third and fourth and then Salzburg last. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to show Braga v Celtic at the end of October. Then we're going to skip through and show Salzburg and Rangers in mid-December. We'll leave the Dundee derby in December and then we'll show one a bit later in the year instead. So I think that's how we're going to plan the European group stages. I'm not sure how to rotate the side. We'll think about that as we get there. We will rotate for the League Cup and hope we can get through. Our backup side's not a huge amount weaker in truth. It's still a good team. It's just that they're not match fit. They're not confident. They're not coherent together. So hopefully the dynamics start to improve. Fingers crossed we can stay in that top half. If we can get through in Europe, it would be an absolute dream. But I'm not sure it's going to happen in truth. If you did enjoy this episode though, our European group stage debut and a late equaliser in the Dundee derby, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments how you think we're getting on. I think I'm getting frustrated because we're not playing that well. But I've got to remember that we're four years in. This time last year, we were tearing our hair out at our growth in League One. And now we're playing in the Europa League. We're competing in the top six of the Scottish Premiership. And we've already won the Scottish Cup. I think I've got to reduce my expectations slightly because this isn't a top three or four side. The media have a sixth or seventh alongside Kilmarnock and I think that's what we need to aim for. If we can make the top six split, if we can compete in Europe and do well in one of the cups, I think we consider it a good season. So let me know if you agree and if you want to stay up to date with how we're getting on, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. A massive thank you in the week for helping me reach 2,000 subscribers. A massive achievement just seven weeks after the new game came out. It really does mean a lot. So thank you for your incredible support. Thank you for continuing to follow this series. We'll be back tomorrow with Bangor City and a live stream in the morning. That with the rivals Dundee United of course. And you can catch up with all the playlists in the eye above as well as the link over to the podcast channel. But a big thanks for watching this one. You'll continue to support with the series. And I'll see you next time for more big action against an old firm club in Celtic and a big tough trip to Portugal for Braga in the Europa League groups. Could be worse, couldn't it? I'll see you next time. <laughs>